Thanks very much, Betty. I am joined by Senator Vitter and Senator Brown, who today will hold this hearing and release this long-awaited Government Accountability Office report on, on Too Big to Fail. And let me put the question right to you. I'll go to you, Senator Brown, first. Uh, this report, I understand the testimony has now been posted on the website. Did the GAO conclude, as you all have suggested, that the biggest banks in this country are getting ex implicit subsidy because they're deemed a too big to fail? Yeah, they're, they're already getting a subsidy. We know that from a variety of different reports even prior to this and different studies. 80, 90, 100 basis points, $80 billion subsidies, probably at least. And we also know as the banks get larger and larger, 25% larger just since the crisis, we also know that in times of crisis, the advantage is even bigger to the big banks. And that's particularly alarming. Uh, and my understanding is the GAO study may have something in here for everyone, Senator Vitter. Uh, some of the testimony posts already suggest that uh, while there may have been an advantage during the crisis, maybe it's been reduced or eliminated, as the Treasury suggested, since that time. Uh, can, can your critics make the case, listen, if there was a subsidy, it's gone away? Well, first of all, the mega banks used to be arguing there was never any subsidy, no subsidy. Now they're having to admit, yes, there was or is a subsidy, and they're arguing about the amount of it. Uh, the, the report says it may have gone down some with economic conditions getting much better. The report also says if we go back to those same crisis conditions of 2008, the subsidy goes up. Uh, so uh, I think clearly there is a too big to fail subsidy or cost of funding advantage. And I don't think it's been reduced significantly if you factor in the general uh, economy. Senator Brown, as you said, there have been a lot of studies looking at this issue. The IMF posted one. Some of the banking groups have posted their own showing there isn't a subsidy out there. How does this report change the debate in your view, if it well, does at all? I think it changed the debate in that it it reinforces the case that Senator Vitter and I have been making that in times of crisis that that investors will flock to the largest banks if they're in a if, if they think too big to fail still exists and investors do it doesn't matter what David and I think what matters is the investors the market thinks too, too big to fail is still with us in times of bad economic crisis they're going to go in greater number to the larger banks um, again with getting getting even bigger subsidies than they get now will, will, will this report actually have a specific subsidy number I don't think it will. Uh, but, Peter, you mentioned numerous reports. There have been numerous reports, about 16. The two funded by the mega banks said no big deal. All of the others said, yes, there is a significant too big to fail subsidy. Some of those other reports quantified it, uh, like uh, Bloomberg saying $87 billion, or excuse me, $83 billion. Yeah, a Bloomberg View number that, that was posted uh, right. last year. Right. Um, again, uh, Senator, we have the Treasury Department saying we think Dodd-Frank has addressed this. We agree there was a problem, potentially, but well, there have been regulatory changes since then uh, that address these issues. There's no need, for example, for the legislation you all are talking about this point. Yeah, well, you would expect that out of Treasury. I mean, they're a big defender that everything has been solved. I think this report is further ammunition that this is a continuing issue. Too big to fail is not dead and gone at all. It exists. The number goes up and down depending on the state of the economy, the state of risk, but it clearly exists. And again, you even have corporate treasure types saying, yes, this is something we look at in terms of where we put our money, particularly in times of a bad economy. What, what is this? Uh, what happens to, to your legislation in the light of the Senator Brown? Is there the political will, nearly six years removed from the crisis, to actually make further regulatory changes here? Well, there, there's there's great support for this bill. It's it's not a majority yet in the House or Senate. Wall Street has a lot of influence here, but more and more of our colleagues understand these banks are not just too big to fail. They're too complex to regulate. They're too big. They're too complicated to manage. Look at the problems these largest banks have had. And ultimately, the problem is that this just encourages risky behavior. If you're too too big to fail. There's incentives to engage in risky behavior. You make more money when you engage in risky well, but behavior. But why not let the regulatory changes that, that have already been announced? Well, I think they've effect. helped. I, I don't argue that Dodd Frank didn't help with these regulatory changes, uh, with Title II and other things. I, but I do argue they didn't help nearly enough. It's partly about size. It's partly about complexity, and it's partly about fair play. And these banks go on the capital markets, and they they get a better interest rate than the Huntington or Fifth Third or Key uh, in my and, state and or community banks. Peter, the other measurement that's significant is what share had mentioned there is a clear uh, trend toward much greater consolidation. Now that was a pre-existing trend, but it's been actually accelerated significantly since the crisis, and that is is very dangerous on a lot of folks' so you, minds. So your message to Wall Street, Senator Brown, is this report 
bolsters your case and they should expect a new push for your legislation? Yeah, and I, I think you're also going to see from the regulators. I mean, after David and I introduced our bill, you saw FDIC, you saw OCC, and you saw the Fed, Feds enact higher capital standards, not as high as we were, or passive, or push higher capital standards, not as high as we, we think, but moved in that direction. I think this debate shows like this, these discussions that David and I have been involved in with others help to contribute that debate to get this to be taken more seriously than it has been. The debate's going to continue on yes, with, this, uh, with this report and your hearing today. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank Appreciate you, it. A preview Thanks, here from Senator Brown, Senator Vitter, a, uh, still an unusual political couple uh, here in Washington, two, uh, two senators, Republican, Democrat, on this too big to fail issue. Betty, we'll send it back to you in New York.